So newspapers are struggling during this recession, but glossies, magazines are also facing an ad slump and also a consumer retrenchment. Well, here to talk about the industry with us is the first lady of magazines, one of the most prominent figures in American publishing, Kathy Black, the president of Hearst Magazines, and also the author of the bestseller, Basic Black, which uh, we had interviewed when it first came out a couple of years ago. Kathy, great to have you back on the program. Thank or you, Betty. It's back great here to be at Bloomberg. Here. Okay, so no doubt it is a very tough market, not just for newspapers, but for magazines as well. I was reading through um, some statistics. Uh, eMarketer says 525 magazines folded in 2008. Hundreds or more than 100 has fold, have folded so far this year. So how are you keeping readers interested? I mean, how are you keeping circulation yeah. up? Well, first of all, I mean, you always have to bring new product into the market. So at Hearst, we launched a joint venture with the Food Network. Um, about a, We tested for about six or eight months, and our Food Network magazine is now at 1.1 million circulation. So when you have the right product at the right time. Now, the magazines that you're talking about, most of them have really not been uh, national magazines with any degree of reputation or or I mean uh, magazines you know, fail they yeah, launch and they, and they fail they come all and the they time. go I mean it right. just happens that we live in New York City so when when it, when a major magazine fails it's like oh my goodness right. but then we have What's to look at the on? other things that are really happening but you know I admit that it has been a, a tougher time in the magazine business for the last 18 months or so well how are you keeping the readers interested I mean particularly with this crisis I mean how did this crisis change the game for well, you well first of all I think that every editor in chief no matter whether at a Hearst magazine or whether at our competitors I mean, they are thinking about how can they stay relevant, how can they be innovative, how can they be creative, and those are the kinds of things that every magazine editor has to deal with, and they are. You know, they're very smart, they're very creative, they're very innovative. So when I think about some things that they're doing, they work very closely um, in trying to, you know, how do we work at the newsstand? And so they're doing, you know, stronger cover lines. I mean, if you take a Harper's Bazaar, it's, you know, buy it, buy it now, love it forever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's the high and but, low, it's the mix and the match. But are you trying to gear more towards people? People who are now saving and looking at their budget. If you look at a, many of the cover lines of magazines today, it is about being smart about your money. It is about not just saving, but it's about putting your money in the right places. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be, you know, magazines have always been helpful to their readers. So we are a service vehicle in many ways. But, you know, women still love to shop. They're not shopping today as much as <laughs> what they were before. But, you know, Mary Claire, one of our magazines, just did a little, the, the new way of shopping, a little booklet that was on the cover of the magazine. Right. So again, it's, it's new and I, it's, they're not new ideas, but we just have to ramp them You're up even more. Them. Yeah. Okay, ad spending, I was looking at, at a numbers there. I mean, they pretty much look like they're just going to keep going down um, for the next five years. Oof. I hope not. Um, What's your view on? <clears throat> well, first of all, I don't have a crystal ball, but we've seen three, or three, maybe four of our magazines are up meaning in pages and revenue in our November and December issues. What I want to believe, knock on whatever, <laughs> Black Onyx, is that the worst is behind us. <laughs> is that the worst is behind us. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm not estimating that the first six or nine months of 2010 are going to be robust, but I think that we will begin to come out of this by the second half of 2010. But why do you think for those issues they've gone up? Well, we have power brands. I mean, you take Good Housekeeping, you take Housepolitan, um, you take the Oprah Magazine, you take now the Food Network. But, you know, these are power brands. And so if you're really looking at your budget and you're saying, I can't be in 25 magazines, I'm going to go where I know my core audience is, mm -hmm. you know, that's a Cosmo for the young woman. So that's the core audience. Okay. Uh, we'll talk more about ad spending, sure. Kathy, and also uh, just uh, in terms of uh, we'll talk about uh, possibly your next career move. Okay. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, so Kathy, <laughs> we'll be back after the break. Okay. Joining me back again is Kathy Black. She's the president of Hearst Magazines. And Kathy, you know, just re before the break, we were talking about the advertising markets and whether or not we're going to see a rebound. A big part of that rebound is going to be the automakers and the luxury retailers. Uh, are they ever going to come back to what we saw pre-2007? Well, here's my point of view. Um, they have to build brands again. I mean, they have to reestablish the relationship with the American consumer. They've got to be out there. I mean, I acknowledge that they've been through unbelievably difficult times. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we were just in Detroit uh, making sales calls on ad agencies and on the client or on those advertisers. And, you know, I think they feel like they've come through the worst of it. Um, they're feeling more optimistic. We just got a, a big order from one of the big three mm. uh, to run across several of our magazines over the next really? few months. So, it was, you know, hopefully it will run. Um, <laughs> right. But that was very exciting. And so I, th I think they're beginning to kind of 
look forward and, and look to the future. And how are you, though? I mean, I read before that you're shortening your production cycles, for instance, for your magazines, trying yeah. to make them more like newspapers yeah. or weeklies, I guess, than monthlies in order to, I, I suppose, be flexible for advertisers? Well, we want to be, we want to have as shortened a close as we can because we want to be able to take that advertising at the last possible moment because budgets are changing, creative changes, all of those kinds of things at the last minute. So we have literally taken about a week out of our production schedule. We want to get to take two weeks out of our production schedule, which can mean a lot. I mean, if you take a magazine like Cosmopolitan, mm -hmm. on average for the past year, they've brought in between two and three additional pages into each issue because of the shortened closing date. We've done a lot of that at Hearst Magazines. We've looked at all of our back office operations, if you will, production, mm -hmm. manufacturing, distribution, ad sales, structure, organization, and trying to figure out how can we produce our magazines more efficiently, mm -hmm. both for the reader, so it's more timely, as well as for the advertiser. So a lot of them are works in progress, but we're continuing very aggressively at it. Well, aside from that, anything else that you're working on, though, to try to get advertisers that you may not have gotten? Well, I, personally, I've been out on the road for the last year. Uh, we have a presentation called Magazine of the Future. It talks about innovation and creativity, uh, what our editors are doing, what advertisers are doing very creatively with this. I mean, yeah. for example, last week, Esquire Magazine opened up a big promotion in Soho called Designer Visions. We have four of our magazines participating in that. A lot of this is really experiential. Okay. House Beautiful had a huge thing this summer in Rockefeller Center called Kitchen of the Year. Okay. So, you know, a lot of this is ideas as well. All right, Kathy, in just the time that we have, though, I do want to talk about your digital strategy. Uh -huh. I know the New York Post wrote an article recently uh, pointing out the Hearst percentage from, from digital uh, advertising, I guess the revenue there, is lower than some of the other magazine groups like Time Warner, for instance. So well, how we don't have weeklies for one thing, but okay. importantly, we will sell about two and a half million paid subscriptions via the internet this year. That is a huge and important new revenue source for us. On the advertising side, our digital properties are up about 20% in advertising. But again, I mean, compared to the print part of the portfolio, it is still small, but our goal is to keep moving that forward. Mm -hmm. All of our magazines have web Websites. We, have, we also have a number of owned or joint ventures. We have something called Delish.com. Last year we launched, I mean, last week we launched RealBeauty.com. Right. We own Some a of the couple top of websites for those. Yeah. Um, and we're very excited about it. Okay. Kathy, we're out of time, but thank you so much. It was great to see you. You too, Betty. Kathy Black, president of Hearst Magazine.